Okay, uh, so today we are going to see uh, uh, posting of the logs from universal forward to different uh, indexers. In my previous video, I've explained you like how to post the, uh, how to ingest the logs in Splunk using this universal forwarder. So now if you have the requirement of uh, uh, posting the logs to multiple indexers, uh, not just one, then how we can achieve that. So for that, I have already uh, set up a small infra on AWS cloud and wherein I have configured uh, two uh, indexer servers and uh, one server I have configured it for universal forward. So this is my Splunk indexer one. This is going to act as an indexer two. And this is uh, the box for uh, where I have installed universal forwarder. So the Splunk service is running on all these uh, boxes. Uh, this is the complete Splunk installation because it's going to act as a uh, Splunk indexer, right? So uh, that's why I've installed the complete package here and you can see it's running. Similarly, on this box as well, the complete Splunk package has been installed and it, it's up and running. On this one, uh, as I said, it's going to act as a universal forwarder machine. So on this one, I have installed the agent and to check the status. Yeah, so uh, Splunk service is running on all these three boxes. However, for now, on this universal forwarder, if you go inside the ATC system local, I haven't, you don't see this inputs.conf and outputs.conf, right? So I haven't configured uh, any outgoing traffic. I haven't added any monitoring stanza here on universal forwarder as of now. However, uh, before, I, before I do that, let me just show you that I've already enabled receiving of the data on uh, these uh, both indexers uh, and that I'm going to do using the default port uh, 997. So that's enabled there. This is the second indexer. Okay, so here also it's uh, enabled. Fine, uh, so now let's configure the inputs. Okay. Let's go to universal forwarder. Okay, so now uh, before setting up the inputs uh, 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 to, to monitor the log files uh, which are residing on this machine, Let's configure the outputs.conf here, like uh, add the forward servers where you want to forward the traffic, right? So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you uh, how to forward the logs to multiple indexers in a single go. And if you have any specific requirement of uh, posting some specific uh, logs only to any specific indexer, that how we can achieve that. Okay, so let's firstly add both the indexers as a uh, forward server on this universal forwarder. So for that, we need to just execute Splunk add forward server and then the IP of our indexer machine. So I'm going to do for first indexer server first. Okay, and as you have seen the Receiving is enabled on triple nine seven, the default port on this index and machine, right? So let's do that. Okay. So it will ask for the username password if the session has been expired. Okay, so this is added now. If you see, it would have created outputs.conf now. And if you look at the data inside this, you will see that this machine has been added as a forward server on this universal forwarder machine. So now this universal forwarder is ready to push the data to this indexer machine. However, before we push that, let me add another indexer. So I'm just going to replace this IP with the IP of second indexer. Okay, just pick it. The port is going to be same, that is 997. Sorry, there was a network glitch. Uh, let me redo. 
okay so this is universal forwarder and we have seen that okay, let's go to okay so this outputs.conf is there and we have seen that the first indexer okay i think okay both the indexers has been added here to forward the data from this machine to both the indexers okay so now both these uh, servers has been added here uh, let's configure some inputs to test whether it's sending the data to both the machines or not so for that uh, i have already created some test files uh, inside Okay, so inside OPT I have created some test files, test.log, test idx, test idx2. Okay, so here, okay, before we configure the inputs, let me just uh, reorganize this outputs.conf. So, okay, uh, let me just create two different groups so that we are able to push the, some specific logs to specific indexer um, okay. so now good server okay so i'm just creating two different uh, groups here okay okay so this is done Let's remove this. Uh, I just copied it uh, below. Okay, and now, so I'm just going to use this group for our first indexer. So I'm removing the second IP from here. This is the IP of uh, second indexer. This one I'm going to use for the second indexer. So removing the IP for the first indexer okay so this is our second indexer ip uh, 18143158.8 uh, let's just reconfirm it yeah you can see it here so it's 18143 okay this is the ip of our first indexer 13250502525 perfect so this is done uh, just give some friendly name. So I'm leaving it blank for now. I will come back to that soon. So to this indexer group, I'm going to give a name of maybe indexer group one. And similarly, I'll give a name to this group. in tax group two okay so now this is done and then the default group i'm going to configure as indexer group one so i'll tell you like where it comes in use uh, so we have created two uh, indexer groups here uh, this is our uh, indexer one group this is our indexer two group and uh, there is no limit. We can put multiple uh, uh, indexers uh, IPs here. That's, there is no restrictions. Okay, so having said that, uh, let's uh, configure our inputs now. Okay, so this is done. Now let's create some uh, monitoring paths. So for that, so I'm going to monitor, uh, okay, I'm going to monitor opt-test.log index. I have created test index on both the uh, indexers, so I'm going to use that. Source type, I may use like 
PUF test logs. Uh, you can give any name, whatever you want. Disabled zero, so it means it's enabled and the uh, universal forwarder has to pick this to monitor the uh, monitor this log path. And I'm not defining any routing here. So what does it mean that it will post these logs to the default group? What is the default group? So the default group is if you go to So the default group is indexer group one, which accommodates this indexer IP. So if I'm not explicitly defining anything here, it means that it will be pushing the logs to the default indexer group. However, let's create another uh, input stanza here. Okay, I'll create three in total. I just want to show you the routing, how does it take place? And then, uh, what's the second file we have here? Okay, so for this one, we have created the monitoring stanza. This is our second file. Okay, so let's take that. Paste test uh, idx1.log and this one I want to send it to my indexer group one okay so I'm just going to pick the name of our indexer group one we'll post this log file to indexer group one. There is one another uh, test file that is uh, test hyphen uh, underscore idx2 dot log, right? So uh, let's create a monitoring stanza for that as well. Okay, and this one I want to send it to my indexer group two. So the name for that is indexer group two. Okay, so now uh, I'll just uh, reiterate what I said. So there are three files which I want to monitor using this uh, universal forwarder. And I've created three different monitoring Nisninja of on uh, inside inputs.conf, right? So this is for the first test file, which I want to monitor. So index, I'm going to use test across all these files. Uh, source type, I'm going to use same. You have test logs, disabled is zero, which means that it has to monitor this log path. For first monitoring stanza, I'm not defining any TCP routing, which means that it's going to post the logs to the default uh, indexer group which is indexer group one in our case, default group. Now for the second file, I want it to push the logs to my indexer group one, uh, the group name indexer group one. So for that, we need to use this TCP routing parameter here. And indexer group one, if you see, it has this IP. So this log file should go to this indexer, correct? Similarly, for this test hyphen, uh, sorry, underscore idx2 dot log, I want this log path uh, events to be pushed to my, this indexer group, which is indexer group two. And the IP for this indexer group two is this. So these logs will be pushed to this uh, indexer. So now it's done. Let's try to restart a Splunk. Tracking runs and walks is available on Echo Buds through the Alexa app on your... Okay, so once the restart is done on Universal Forwarder, we should see the logs in uh, Splunk indexers. 
So this is my first indexer. Let's see if we have the logs here. Okay, so you can see that we have the test.log. Let me open that content there. Cat test.log. So we have these three lines there, here. This is the test log event for default. Okay, there is a spelling mistake server, second test log event, new line added. So all these three lines, if you see, new line, second test log event, and default server. So these three has been posted to that indexer group one, which is the default one. Because for this, if I show you again, we did not define any uh, routing explicitly, right? So it's pushing the logs to the default group. And then uh, if you take a look on the other file, So this has just one line. This is the log file to be ingested on indexer one. So indexer one. So this line should be here, indexer one server group testing. Now, if you move to indexer two, so you can see just one event here, right? And why is that case? Because we have explicitly defined here that this log path test underscore idx2 dot log it should push the logs to this indexer group two. And if you take a look on that file, it has just one event here. So same we can see here in the indexer two. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's how the TCP routing works. You may receive some requirements that uh, wherein you just need to post some specific logs to some specific indexers. You can achieve that using this TCP routing uh, parameter in, in inputs.conf. Uh, okay, I think, yeah, then that's it for this session. Uh, I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.